Last time on Astor Alaska, we were put to work on our current home, a 45 foot sailboat from the 70s called the Commodore Murray, earning our passage aboard so that we could escape the harsh northern winter. Whilst exploring the world famous Inside Passage, we ran into one or two problems, and I learnt the hard way how not to raise a sail. This time, we're pushing on through to remote Canada and out into the Pacific Ocean. Next up on this unforgettable adventure is a slice of paradise in remote British Columbia. One of those places you can only get to if you have a boat or a seaplane. The ship's bay, another remote hot spring, this time in Canada. Unbelievable, beautiful forest. It's raining, but that's actually perfect. It's just so fresh and empty. There's nobody here. Alaska is loving it. It's got this whole place to run around right now. It's incredible here. We're gonna go for a bath. Nice hot, natural hot spring bath. Whoa! Yeah. This place is falling apart. Getting here last night was hectic, oh, okay? Yeah. Wow, man. So stressful. Yeah, we needed like proper dramatic music playing. Like, dun, 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 dun. Oh, man, it was so exciting though. We were coming into this dark bay. We had to turn the sonar on. We were beep, 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 seeing targets on the screen. The radar. The, the radar, dark. not sonar. We ended up mooring for the first time, which was. I was stressed to mooring. Really? Um, I wasn't too sure if it was uh, going to hold us or not because we have no idea how old it is. Or Yeah, there's this, this buoy that just says uh, pry, like private, uh, use at your own risk. <laughs> you, just, you don't know what's down there, you don't know what you're tying to. It's really deep here so we couldn't get an anchor down. Yeah, we would not have been able to see this dock last night. It would have been tough. Tiny little, because we were seeing it from this way so we were just sort of seeing a little plank. A little like that. A plank, yeah. It how was it much. coming in last night? It was dodgy. Raining like this, uh, black dock right on the beach that you can't see. But luckily, they have mooring buoys and we could see the reflection from them. It was at or jog all night. Either yeah. way, we're getting to the hot springs. <laughs> Unlike our Volkswagen, the ship does have hot water, but only a limited size holding tank. And to be honest, the places we've been are about as far away from a faucet as you can get. So our showers had been brief during our passage and these remote hot springs have been so much appreciated. Hard to believe in the middle of nowhere there's such a paradise. In fact, we enjoyed it so much that we attempted to find our way back at night time. Are we moving? I think so. Look at the dock. Yeah, we're moving. We have no idea where we're pulling ourselves. Sure, yeah, we do. We're headed to the hot springs, but we don't actually know where the end of this line is. Oh, shit. Now what? Oh, well, we have to let go and, and paddle to right. the entrance. Go on, Alaska. Go <laughs> And cut. We didn't make it too far away from the Bishop's Bay Hot Springs before we realised that we were running dangerously low on drinking water. So we decided to set course for this ghost town to search for some non-salty fluids.
Back in 1918, Buttedale was an old salmon cannery and logging camp. Now it is home to one man and his dog. He had been living here for four years and emerged out of the rubble in a heartbeat to welcome us. The camera shy individual boarded the Commodore Murray and helped us fill our tanks with fresh water. And in return, we left him with enough chocolate to last until next Halloween. Although we don't expect many children will be visiting on this otherwise uninhabited island. Overnight, Captain Jordan navigated us closer to Vancouver Island and towards our last and most treacherous stretch of Canadian water. Mostly cloudy with a chance of rain showers. Chance of precipitation, 30%. Northwest winds around five miles an hour. The weather advisory coming in over the radio warned of poor visibility. Not exactly what you want to hear as you enter the narrow channel. Just monitoring channel 71 for other ships coming our way. A bit foggy up ahead. Excellent visibility. What were we worried about? Uh, unless you look this way. Not quite as good. barely see the ocean. But this was an excellent opportunity to test out our radar tuning skills and the new foghorn that Ben had installed in Ketchikan. The morning fog burnt off with the first pot of coffee. But then we had to face the strongest currents we've ever seen in our lives. <laughs> That's really scary! <sighs> Holy... Oh my God! <laughs> Oh my god. Full on world. Oh, shit. Boat's, boat's going sideways. Boat's going sideways. <laughs> oh man. That is madness. It was as if the ocean was furious and rising up from the depths, trying to suck you to the bottom. I can't even imagine what it would be like to go overboard here. This is the stuff that nightmares are made of. Let's put our life jackets back on. Ow. The whole boat starts going sideways. Look at that ocean. We wouldn't know what's going to happen if I was going to go. Going around, look. We're out in the open, that is the Pacific Ocean. That is Washington State. We are back down on the 48th parallel in the lower 48 states. I'm gonna sit down because it's a little bit roly-poly. Um, Captain Jordan wanted to take advantage of the good weather and try and push for his winter base of Newport, Oregon. So we're gonna keep motoring on down we did have the sails up this morning, but it's just not really enough wind. So um, we're just motoring along, staying about three miles off the coast, trying to take advantage of the current which is coming down from the north. It's pushing us, we're getting about seven knots, which is nice. So we should be in Oregon by tomorrow evening. Everything moves really slowly in boat world. You can't be in a rush. Wow, daddy. Sea legs, eh?
Okay, take it up. Eventually, the wind picked up a little and we were able to throw the spinnaker up for the first time on the trip. Jeez. Yeah, but still, man, scary. Seven three knots. Woo! Not even the dolphins can't be part of that. Sailing on the open ocean was really a different experience, and we were beginning to appreciate the tranquility of the inside passage in comparison. Two days in, and we were seriously feeling it. This is our second day on the Pacific Ocean, in the open, outside of the inside passage. Does that make sense? Yeah, you can, I don't know if you can see in the background that huge wave which is actually currently bigger than Leah's head going underneath us. There is some serious swell and it's been really tricky to stay, it's been tricky to sleep. You talk, so you say something. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> so it's the second night that we haven't slept at all. I think all night it feels like, you know, when you're dreaming and you're falling and you're waking yourself up because you feel like you're falling, it feels like that constantly when you're sleeping. And you're yeah. constantly tense because you're rolling around like this all night. Yeah, you've got to kind of like sleep like a starfish, like with <laughs> like all your extremities out to, as anchor points so you don't like <laughs> roll off the bed. But even that doesn't work. I got in about an hour's sleep last night, about an hour's sleep the night before. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty tough going. It's hard because you, I keep waking up with like my body being pumped with adrenaline because I feel like I'm falling or I'm rolling out of bed and all of a sudden like, like you're full of like your heartbeats going and you just can't you can't get back to sleep after that and then all you hear is boom 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 we are now in oregon um captain jordan took the night shift again what a hero um and we are going past astoria and cannon beach where the goonies was filmed yeah. you can see that we can see cannon beach from here Kind of cool coming down like three, four, five miles off the coast and, and seeing uh, places that we've travelled in La Combi before. You miss the Combi. Yeah, you miss it now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, miss it now, and I'm going to throw up every five minutes. One more day of this, and then we're on land, and I'm never coming on this water again. That's a lie. You like it, really, yeah? I do. I just want to stop rolling. This is like this for three days. It's just like you wake up and you're rolling. You go to sleep and you're rolling. I just want to stop. The second part of the trip, um, we haven't been able to stop as much because we've had a lot of ground to cover um, because Captain Jordan's got to fly back to Anchorage for his job. Um, so we need to get to home port, Newport, Oregon, which means we've pretty much spent three, four days in a row then like a quick couple of hours stop and then two, three more days That's Newport, Oregon. That's where we're headed. We are only a couple of hours away. I can see it, so it's probably about half a day's travelling. By the time we arrived at our final destination port of Newport, Oregon, we were glad to be heading to dry land. All up, we had spent two months on board the Commodore Murray, and we'd loved boat life, and certainly fallen in love with the lifestyle. We had travelled the inside passage in a sailboat, which is a bucket list adventure we never thought that we would experience. We'd also had the opportunity to get to know each other a little bit better too, which to be honest, all three of us were happy about. This chapter of our lives had been a phenomenal experience. Meeting new people, exploring new landscapes, learning new skills, making mistakes, embracing challenges, and putting ourselves outside of our comfort zone is what travel is all about. And sailing has undoubtedly been one of the best adventures of our lives. Oh, 
Unfortunately, now the combi crew has to split up. Leah and I will travel in opposite directions and for the first time since I met her in Peru, I must say goodbye to little Alaska, as the girls are relocating to Canada. As for me, I must continue the search for our new transmission in the hope of completing our Arctic expedition the following spring. In order to do that, I must now leave North America and fly home to my US Embassy in London to ask for a visa to finish our Alaska project. At the time, I thought it was a huge inconvenience, but I was about to find out that this would be the biggest roadblock that I've encountered so far, and one that would seem impossible to overcome. But for that, you'll have to wait until next time.